Hello, good people. Hello, beautiful people. Um, welcome to the Fancy Lady Music Channel. And today I'm doing this video in connection with my esteemed colleague. She's a Jefferson Award winner, Jeff Jefferson Award for Community Service winner. Her name is Kelly Armstrong, and her podcast is called Straight Talking with Kelly, where real conversations happen. Where real conversations happen. Check her out on YouTube. Also check out the Fancy Lady Music Channel. And today we're here to discuss Rita Marley. Rita Marley. Love her. Rita, we're here to discuss Rita. My new shero. Right, <laughs> her new shero. <laughs> In connection with the One Love, Bob Marley, Marley movie. movie. And yes. since it's, we're approaching the end of International Women's Month. So we ta thought this would be a good time to discuss Rita's role in the movie, how she was portrayed and what she taught us. Yes. So before we get started, I actually want to give a shout out to Sheila for actually including me in this wonderful topic because I was not that familiar with Bob Marley or Rita Marley. I mean, of course, I knew Bob Marley's music, but in terms of his life and his lifestyle, all of that, I did not know. And after seeing the movie, after reading the book, it just opened me up to a whole new way of seeing and understanding who Rita Marley really is. And I can't wait for us to, for us to be able to tell you what she means to us. And um, yeah, so let's get it going. Let's get it. So uh, how many of you guys actually seen the movie? I thought the movie was phenomenal. I thought the casting was superb. Um, the music, everything. But I don't think you really get to understand the movie unless you read the book. And the book is called, what's the name of that, Sheila? No Woman, No Cry. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> My Life with Bob Marley. Rita Marley with Hetty Jones. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it really ties in everything because, of course, before I read the book and just saw the movie, I saw the movie a couple of times, I didn't really have an understanding as to why Rita would put up with some of the stuff that she put up with. But after reading the book, I was like, that's because she's what you call a genuine woman. This woman, you guys, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'm going to let Sheila kind of go from here well, well I think that when I saw One Love I think that I, it felt like a lot of the material in One Love was drawn from this book I've read it twice when I first read it back in the 90s I was so enamored with it and um, years ago I was asked by the Marley family to review um, a special edition read a Marley album so I read the book again for research and man, it still blew me away. The main point is that Rita, if it weren't for Rita, Bob wouldn't be into reggae and Rastafari because as you know, he was headed in sort of another direction. His, he idolized Curtis Mayfield and the Harmony um, groups of that time. As you see in the movie, you could see him in the recording sessions. So I, Kelly and I feel that what do you think about what was the question if it weren't for Rita would Bob oh, have been in reggae music honey, that's your mom. she is the reason why Bob became Bob Marley and not only because she put up with so much of his shenanigans but because she really loved this man she loved his talent his ability and then you have to remember that they met at a very young age they grew up together so you know, she knew him when he had nothing, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. And uh, once she became a Rastafarian and she got indoctrinated into it, it really became a part of who she really was. And one of the things that I didn't know that I found very interesting about what a Rastafarian was, because in my mind, I just thought they were somebody that smoked weed all the time <laughs> yeah. and wore dreadlocks, mm -hmm. you know, and that was it. But that was so far from the truth. I mean, it was a spiritual connection with them. Mm -hmm. It was uh, about love. It was about unity. It was about caring for their people. And that is what Bob and Rita did. The, I mean, and the simple fact that she raised kids from him out of wedlock actually shows that she really believed in what she, mm -hmm. her, her, her spirituality. She really believed in that. Mm -hmm. So I find her a fascinating woman. 
I find her to be extremely intelligent. Matter of fact, as I was reading the book, you guys, you should see how many highlights I got in this book mm -hmm. that I'll be reading some of these things to you guys that I thought were very, very uh, interesting. Uh, some of the things that she said that really made me have this connection with her mm -hmm. because uh, being a married woman myself, I was just like, wow. So what people I think really need to understand is that she is not that she was really okay with some of the things that he did. She talks about how it hurt her, mm -hmm. how disappointed she was because of some of the things she did. So it's not like she was like, oh, you know, I'm staying with this man. Cause she wasn't staying with him for his money or anything like that. Because remember, she was with him when he had nothing. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact that he never, ever divorced her, mm -hmm. that should tell you something, too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yes. And I am the opposite of Kelly. My relationship... I was in love with the young man that was polyamorous, a Jamaican musician. And so I wasn't in the position to be a wife. I wasn't married. And I saw how he was able to manage multiple relationships and multiple households, but still give each woman love and make each woman feel like a million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, ha if, whether they had children with them, whether they didn't. Although I'm in contact with about five of those women right now, and I consider them my sisters since he's gone. And if I talk to any one of them, they will say that that was truly the love of their lives. And I think it's the, we don't really understand this in Western culture. And I think um, a lot of controversy from the movie is the polyamory in the movie that's hinted at and its impact on Rita. Yeah. But yeah. you're saying, Kelly, that Rita... You know, when she had so much love in her spirit, just as Bob did, and the simple fact, you know what, what I actually thought about, Bob died at 39 years old. He mm. was very young. 36, yeah. Had yeah, she not allowed him to be him, I don't know if he would have been the Bob Marley that he became. Mm. Bob Marley was a free spirit, and mm. she allowed him to be that mm. and not get in the way of that. Mm. And it's because of her now that's keeping his legacy alive right. you know so right. the simple fact that I think he knew what kind of woman he was marrying I really mm -hmm. think he knew uh, mm -hmm. maybe she didn't know what she was getting into <laughs> yeah, right. but he surely knew what he had in her right right yeah and in the book she makes it clear she said I wasn't looking I didn't want a light-skinned boyfriend I wanted a tall black boyfriend she says it in the book so she said her taste was more towards someone like Peter Tosh, who was tall and dark skinned. But I think it was something about Bob's spirit. Yeah. That you're saying that yeah. that yeah. took to her. They took they were kindred spirits and twin flames. Well it was interesting that you actually brought up the skin color thing mm -hmm. because I know uh you know her being a dark woman, she mm -hmm. said that she was discriminated against mm -hmm. a lot. It's in um, the movie growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah, where that really kind of bothered her. Uh, we need to stop that, y'all. We mm -hmm. really need to stop yeah, that. Yeah, we do. It's Colorism. Like, it's Colorism, like, boo. It's like really, especially, <laughs> you know, in black folks, you know, we come in every color, every color other the sun. Shades, you, rainbow. You know, yeah. Brothers and sisters can grow up in the same house with the same mom and daddy and still mm -hmm. be different colors. So mm -hmm. we need to stop light and dark because right. you know what? We're all the same, really. You know, you mm -hmm. cut us, we bleed. Right, right. Now, one of the things that I loved about the book and I don't know I don't remember seeing that much of it in the movie about auntie yes auntie yes. honey everybody need an auntie I want <laughs> right. an auntie I want auntie, an auntie I loved her because mm -hmm. auntie was like you know staying on top of her making sure that she was going to do something worthwhile with her life mm -hmm. you know so when she got pregnant auntie was too too through with her right <laughs> <laughs> you know but mm -hmm. auntie stuck by her gave her the kind of guidance and the help that she needed up until the day that auntie left here so mm -hmm. you know i want to give out some love and shout to auntie right, to because auntie. auntie you you did your thing and i mean you kept bob in check too right <laughs> you know and bob was scared of auntie <laughs> and some of the children i think ziggy once i heard ziggy say in an interview that when bob and rita would go on tour it was an auntie that would watch them right I wonder if it's the same auntie. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it is. I'm like sure it probably auntie. is. Yeah. yeah. So I, I love me some auntie, yeah. and I really wish that um, I would have seen her. Yeah. In the book, Don Taylor got mad at auntie because she pulled out a Jamaican doctor fish on the plane, uh, because I guess she didn't like the airline food, so she was just, mm, I'm over it. I brought my food, 
and Don Taylor was mortified. Uh, but I think that preserving one's culture, one's Jamaicanness, mm -hmm. one's blackness, there is no shame in that. You, I think she should have been allowed to eat her food on the plane without judgment and without somebody culturally or mansplaining and man checking her. Mm -hmm. Yes, that yeah. was good. Yeah. And glad she did that and, and she made sure her niece, Rita, that everybody had the foods that they were used to and didn't have to get sick on their airline food. Yeah. She yeah. culturally stood her ground and I like that. Yeah, and that was an interesting thing about too, with Rita and Bob, they were both into health, mm -hmm. nutrition, eating healthy foods. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing that I found very funny is neither mm -hmm. one of them like America. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. That tickled me to know right. and Bob was like, I gotta get up out of here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, they go to work. The, you know, he just didn't understand the too. He said, I'm going back to Jamaica where I can just do music. This other stuff is yeah. not working for me. Right. So I thought that was very I mean, funny that, that they did not like um, America. Yeah. One of my favorite parts is in the book is when Rita, in order to keep her family together and still be with Bob, she relocated to Delaware where Bob's yes. mother was living. And she was just treated so horribly there. She had to clean when clean buildings when she was heavily pregnant and she writes about the fact that when she left the kids at daycare someone had put snow in Ziggy's little snow suit mm -hmm. they weren't used to snow there from Jamaica right. and he got Ziggy got violently he, ill he got sick. and I'm thinking wow what a brave woman to leave an island culture she's never been to America before to be pregnant and have to fend for herself and her children mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I don't think that I could have done that yeah. What about you? Well, you know, you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I found it interesting that when she did meet Bob's mom, mm -hmm. she saw the resemblance where mm -hmm. they looked alike. Oh, yeah, yeah. They looked <laughs> so alike. it's like, yeah. oh, so he just went and married his mama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I right. thought that was kind of cool that because yeah. uh, she did look like her. Yeah, she did. They had the similar yeah. phenotypes. I was just like, both, wow. Both had regal, regal dark skin, mm -hmm. glowing dark skin and vibrant afro hair that turned majestically into dreadlocks yeah. and big bright toothy smiles yes yeah and the other thing that i thought was fascinating too is that she was one of the whalers even oh, though yes. uh -huh. you know uh her group was called something different the i3s yeah yes. but uh -huh. you know but she said when you're with bob everybody's a whaler right, right. Him, yeah. you're gonna be a whaler yeah. today yeah, it's gonna be a whaler. Uh, and the simple fact that you know he loved having her on on set with him you know to be able mm -hmm. to do that and the simple fact that she had that kind of talent too mm -hmm. i mean she was just a renaissance woman she mm -hmm. could do a lot of things you know mm -hmm. i remember when she bought the house mm -hmm. when she wanted to get her kids out of trent town right right you know right. and she got this house built and um furnished it and did everything to make it a home mm -hmm. and the best part that she loved about mm -hmm. it was her garden yeah you know where the people uh -huh. told her you can't grow anything here this is sand and mm -hmm. she showed them well let me show you mm -hmm. and she ended up doing the mm -hmm. greens and mm -hmm. all the other stuff um, there's so a she, lot of magic in this book yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's really it really really is like i said i just really couldn't put it down and when I started getting near the end, I was like, no, I don't want it to end. <laughs> so I started going real slow. Right. <laughs> like, I didn't want it to end because it's right. like, you know, yes. um, and the whole while I'm, I'm reading the book, I was telling Sheila that I actually turned on my Pandora station mm -hmm. to Bob Marley and all of his songs were playing. And then some of his kids songs, the Damien and Stevens, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. just a talented, talented mm -hmm. family. And he loved his children. Mm -hmm. she loved her children mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and what i like about her is that not only did she teach her children manners but she taught them how to love how mm -hmm. to be courteous how to be kind and that's something that lord knows we still need to be mm -hmm. doing you guys we need to be doing that with our children mm -hmm. right and i i was telling her that i have had many interactions in fact i have professional relationships with her children primarily Ziggy and Steven and I've gone to different places and seen them and said and they are just the most loving people um you know they have the the spirit of Bob and Rita that openness that willingness to talk to fans stay late after a show sign autographs you know hang out yeah laugh with people cry with people hear their stories you know, that is very rare. Now, I heard Michael Jackson was like that, too. I heard that, you know, sometimes if you got into Neverland, 
um, when you ha it was time to leave, you didn't want to go. You wanted to stay around Michael forever. And I think that's the spirit that Bob had. And um, with his children, now his son, I find it so ironic that his son, grandson, YG Marley, who's the son of Rohan Marley and Lauren Hill, has got the one of the close to number one hits on the Billboard charts, Praise John in the Moonlight. His other grandson, Elijah, which is the son of his son, Damien, now is proven to have a beautiful voice, mm -hmm. anointed voice. So the grandchildren are taking over now. And Bob said, and it sticks and mentioned in the book, you might be tired of seeing my face, but you can't get me out of the race. So even though he died at 36, his legacy is stronger than ever. Don't oh, you think? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It, definitely because of his children and because mm -hmm. of them keeping his music alive and keeping it in the face of the public. So I'm just so glad that the movie was well received. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so glad the movie was well received. Um, it was number one in the box office. Because Bob, he definitely, you know, he was the messenger. You mm -hmm. know, he, he 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 brought the message of love, peace, and harmony. Mm -hmm. um, in spite, you know, so people focus mostly on the kids out of wedlock and all that kind of stuff. But it's mm -hmm. like, you know what? No, because that, that is his legacy now. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about what his music did to people. You know, you cannot put on a Bob Marley anything and not move to it. Right, right. <laughs> There's no way. It's, it's like, it's you can, I mean, even if you just, you know, if you're in a situation where you can't get up and dance, you're still going to be doing this. Yeah, right. <laughs> or you, you're going to be tapping right. on something. Right. There's no way mm -hmm. you're not going to be moved or touched by the music. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, um, yeah. And not only the music, but even the lyrics, you mm -hmm. know. And it was interesting. That's what I found very interesting. And Rita says this a lot in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, when she'll name a song that, he performed she goes oh that was going he only writes about things that are going on in his life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so all of his stuff that he wrote about you guys were things that he was dealing that with. he was dealing with and and I, I like the way the movie opens with a scene of utopia bliss you have this beautiful cinematic footage of the ocean and yes. the waterfalls and people are you know wading in the water and just having fun and playing soccer but all of a sudden you're taken out of paradise by the sound of gunshots yeah. and then you're going through the ghetto and so it just shocks you out of reality and I think that Bob had the ability to um, Narada Michael Walden once told me the sign of a good recording is when it has a penthouse view and an outhouse bottom so then I interpret it as Bob Marley sang about poverty and violence and despair and heartbreak but but then he his music also had great joy so it took you from the bottom and elevated you to the top especially to let's see the book the album exodus for instance exodus is pure struggle but the end is joy so and this is another book that i recommend exodus the book of exodus by vivian goldman if you want to know about bob's years in london and the creation of the exodus album this is also a good one to check out Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, and he's saying about misery, but he didn't leave you there. At the end of his music, there's hope, and I think that's the sign of a great artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely, definitely. And you know what? He got to the point where it seemed like that whole village depended on him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he became the Messiah of Trenton Town. <laughs> right, right. You know, uh, and to, when he left and went away. You know, they wanted him back. Right. So when he came back to Jamaica, were they excited or what? Oh, yes. yes. That was a great scene in the movie I where he's that. literally getting mobbed. Right. right. I love that. I was yeah. just like, wow. Wouldn't that's... you have loved to be an extra in that scene? Man, man, <laughs> man. That was just so cool. I just thought, wow. Yeah, so his I... hometown was like, Bob is back. Right, you know, right, um... right. And we, we were just talking about how we don't have real superstars like that anymore since the loss of... Michael Jackson and Prince and Whitney Houston in America. We don't really have people that are that level of superstar, superstars that are literally worship that change people's <laughs> lives. Bob Marley's music actually have liberate several countries, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so his mark is worldwide. So, th and that's another thing to to keep in mind that Bob wasn't just, you know, uh, 
a pop artist he was definitely an international icon mm -hmm. i would love to go to jamaica to see his museum mm -hmm. I bet you that is so it's cool. It's incredible. And a lot of the structure of the house and everything, it's exactly how he left it in the 70s. You could even see the original bullet hole in the yeah. wall Wow. Uh, on the tour. And I, I got to tell a story. My first time going to Jamaica, um, it was just so ironic. I went with the, on a girl's trip with a group of women. We went to Ocho Rios. And these women were just so nasty to me. Just, just awful and bitter and whatever and so I wanted to get away from these women so I said hmm I'm out of here so I called my friend Glenn Glenn Brownie shout out to you he said I said I'm, I need to go to Kingston I gotta get away from these people where do you want me to where should I go he said are you kidding you know the only place we go the Bob Marley Museum that's the obvious place <laughs> he said I'm doing a recording studio session there at Tuff Gong Studios so I got in that ca taxi that's the first stop, dropped me off at the museum on my luggage, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I'm from America, right? So I I go up to the gate at the museum. Oh, um, you know, I, could I come in and see what's going on? You know, I hang out with Ziggy and blah, blah, blah. And I'm from America. The woman was like, you can't just come here and say, you know, Ziggy and get into this museum for free. <laughs> so I look over and who is playing soccer in the courtyard, but Ziggy and his brothers. Oh, nice. And I'm like, Ziggy, <laughs> he comes over, beautiful, big smile. Hey, man, hey, big open. He said, so you want to go pon tour? And uh, so we embraced each other, the woman. Oh my God, now she was my best friend. <laughs> oh, we'll take your luggage while you go in. You know, we'll recommend a hotel. So yeah, so it was, it, it was one love. Yeah. My first time at the museum and it was a gathering place. It was like a craft market. There were people selling their wares, people selling their music, people engaging in pan, talk, getting together, talking about Pan-Africanism students, tourists from all over the world. It's like a global marketplace. Wait, right, because I remember when Rita said that her her restaurant was also still there. Yes, it was a yeah, her, it was an Ethiopian the, restaurant yeah, when I was there. Her, yes. her restaurant is still there. Yeah. And then also what I realized, I'm looking right here at one of my notes, mm -hmm. where not only is the museum in Kingston, but there's another one in Universal Studio in Orlando, Florida. No, I didn't. We got to go. Yeah, so we got to right go. Here, it just says right there. So I never imagined the cage is part of history, but there are two replicas of it now, one at the Bob Marley Museum in Kingston and the other one at Universal Studio in Orlando, Florida. Let's go. I <laughs> forgot about that one. Uh, yes, let's go. And I think Kelly should see it. And I'm also going to um, ask Kelly this question because she is a stylist, image consultant, and she's also, she makes clothing. So I wanted to ask you, Kelly, what did you think about the 70s aesthetic than the movie in One Love in, in terms of wardrobe and hairstyling? You know, I thought they did a great job. Mm -hmm. I really did. I don't know if I spent a whole bunch of time looking at that because I was so busy looking at so many other things in the movie, especially like Ben E. Kingsley or whatever his name oh, is. Oh, yeah, Ben yeah, Kingsley. Yeah, yeah he great was job. a great nice job. thing to look at. So <laughs> I, I think I was looking at him. Okay. Uh, but I also, uh, I thought they did a great job, especially mm -hmm. like with all the hairstyles with the women, um, the, the, the setting, everything just looked so authentic. It just mm -hmm. looked like it was really happening mm -hmm. right then and there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. think Bob would really, really be proud mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what his family has done yes, and yes. how they're keeping his legacy alive. I, I just, you know, find it amazing because I believe that they're bringing in a whole new audience mm -hmm. of, you know, young people to get to know Bob and even older people. Because like I said, I didn't know that much about Bob Marley mm -hmm. and the Whalers and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, his lifestyle. And now now I know his kids are performers. So right. I'm listening to them. Because remember I told you I was listening to Steven. Yeah, Steven. And I was uh -huh. like, oh, that child can sing. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, shout out to Steven. Yeah, yeah. And, and Damien too. Damien, I, those yeah. two, uh, Junior I, Gong. Right, yeah. and I got to hear their music and I was like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. So this is like Bob lives on. Right. Wait till you hear the grandchildren. Children. I mean, this movie is also dedicated to Joe Mercer Marley, who was, we lost him tragically in, at the end of 2022, but he was, uh, he was about to blow up as a huge dance hall artist, Joe Mercer, and the grandchildren is Joe Mercer, Elijah Marley, YG Marley, Mystic Marley, 
uh, Skip Marley. How could I forget Skip? So you know now the gener now people know the grandchildren. Yeah. And yeah. I grew up in the '90s when Damien and um, let's see, the Melody Makers started in the '80s, right? So then Melody Makers, Bob's Children dominated in the '80s. Then in the '90s, you started to see uh, the rise of Junior Gong. Okay. And Julie and Marley and those guys. And now in the 2000s, we're seeing the rise of the grandchildren. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Who I just mentioned. Yes, yes. Well, you know, one of the things I remember from the book and the movie is mm -hmm. that Rita talked about how Bob worked. He was like Prince yes, and Michael. Yes, I think uh, they were put on this earth to do mm -hmm. music. Oh, yes. Definitely. And she said that when the, the background singers, if they kind of went off if they were tired or something and they weren't really kind of singing in harmony he would go off oh right <laughs> like, i bet like, y'all need to yeah. get this right right a perfectionist you know, right. in the studio so, you know she said it was not easy working with him because he was you know a hard worker mm. and didn't know when to stop right right and that right. just made me think of prince and michael how they just just were driven mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know um so people that sell their souls to their music or to their work, mm -hmm. they're definitely a different breed. And sometimes their life on earth here is not that long. Nope. Maybe because all the energy they extend. And I think I, and there's a part of me that wonder, do they know this? Right. I right. think there's a part at some time where they're, they're doing this because it's like, you know what? I, I don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what made me so happy about Rita mm -hmm. for being able to let Bob be Bob, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and especially now that he is gone and mm -hmm. gone so soon mm -hmm. that I think if we were able to bring him back and ask him, did you live your life the way you wanted to? He would say yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I yes, think he yes. would be very happy, happy uh, that with... he was able to do it. And then for Rita, now let's talk about her because mm -hmm. she gave up a lot. She did. Yeah. She mm -hmm. gave up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but she never regretted it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things that I love about her, too. She never regretted it. She knew she was just doing what she had to do, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because first she was a, a wife, first and foremost. Secondly, she was a mother. And then her career was just kind of interspersed in there, mm -hmm, you know, so mm -hmm. she was able to do some of the things that she wanted to do. You know, mm -hmm. she got to do her solo album and she got to do, you know, her music years later so she still got to do it mm -hmm. but she didn't want to sacrifice being a good wife and a good mother to do that right, right. where so many other people would put their career ahead right and right, she right. didn't do that she you know didn't. so there's i have so much respect for this woman yeah. and i don't understand where she got her energy either because she, <laughs> <laughs> she she had just as much energy as bob okay right you know right. i yeah. think that's the only way she was able to keep up with him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so she definitely had to be fit and, you know, she would do her workout and she would do her stuff, but she was just a, a very interesting, very interesting woman who, like I said, I've come to admire and, mm -hmm. um, and, and don't sleep on Rita. She know, she knew where to go to get her needs met. She wasn't the woman crying at home and, and talking about her man was gone and possibly doing this. <laughs> she lived her own independent life. Mm -hmm. She had her friends. She had her children. She had a garden, like Kelly mentioned. She had her own music career. And then she had what's good for the goose is good for the game. Exactly. She had that. That was hinted at in the movie. And good for her. I'm, I am not, again, I am a proponent of polyamory. In Western culture, we don't really understand it. A lot of people like one, one person for one person. But you know certain cultures it kind of makes sense especially when you dealing with people that aren't long on this earth so they they're given their energy wherever they can maybe because they know so they're spreading getting people are falling in love with them they're having experiences that the normal person wouldn't have because we are stuck in one place like maybe our one household or our one little city or we don't travel. We don't oh and also Bob was global. He went all over the world. Yeah, he did. Yeah, unlike most of us, unlike a lot of us, he um he had the opportunity to experience so many people and places things and a lot of women, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. And child and women just pour uh, you know, I guess when you're a celebrity, it's just par for the, the taking. Because she actually said that mm -hmm. in the beginning of the book. She she told Bob, she says, Bob, you know, 
we've heard the stories about what happens once you start gaining the, the notoriety and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And she was like, don't get caught up in it. She mm -hmm. did try to tell him that. Right. She did. We saw that in the movie, in yeah, the alley. Right. But, the famous scene in the alley. Yeah. But he was like, I think I'm going <laughs> to get caught up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get yeah. caught up. And, you know, but he did, but it still never stopped him from being creative and it didn't stop him from doing what he set out to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing is, too, now, I thought he was filthy rich, mm -hmm, but Rita made it very clear near the end of the book that they didn't really start making money until after he was gone. Yes, I believe it. That's yeah, what so happens with like, a lot of black artists. And then just remember how they got ripped off. Yes. They got ripped off by yeah. so many people by taking so many his people. publishing. And right. I'm just like, you know what? The right. music industry need to stop I know, I know. Well, but you know what? These young kids are making it stop Yeah, anyway. they are. They, they are. They're, they're taking it back. Yeah. They're, That's and the reason we can't feature Bob. We don't feature Bob Marley's music on this video. Of course, because it's copyrighted. Copyrighted, and we respect that. It would have been so nice though to be able to play one love. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So you're gonna have to sing, Kelly. I'm gonna have to sing. But, yeah. but yeah, the and the younger generation definitely knows about copyrights and ownership and publishing, and and I think that is great. And you don't have to have a traditional entourage and go into a recording studio. They could, you can make a hit song on your iPhone now. Yeah. And and have all of the rights. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think back then it was a lot more formal. You have to be signed to a record company. You had to get the record company to sign you and then you had to hire publicists and managers. You had to have a whole entourage like Bob did. Well, and it seemed like he, that he did have a friend in Chris Blackwell. Chris Blackwell. Of course, yes. Chris Blackwell mm -hmm. seemed mm -hmm. like he was an up and up kind of guy. So that mm -hmm. it's, it's nice if you can find one person that's honest and it's going to do you right. Mm -hmm. But for mm -hmm. the most of the time, you have to be really careful because people are there, mm -hmm. you know, seeing what they can get most of the time. Right. So it's very rare that people mm -hmm. are really there for you because when he got sick and when he was there, where were all of the people who was, right. who was really there for him? I don't know. Rita. You know? Well, I mean, we know Rita yeah, right. was there. I mean, she, we definitely yeah. know that she was there. His children. But in terms and of, you know, and like mother. those two whaler guys that when Rita tried to reach out to them and they mm -hmm. kind of dissed her, I was wow. like, cause they were still upset. Oh yes. 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 And I'm like, talking gonna, about Bunny and Peter. Right, yeah. They gonna hold a grudge. Like, are you mm -hmm. serious? Right. Right. You know, so I'm that's, sure that shocked her. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know. If, I hope eventually that they came along. I don't know if they ever did or not. Yeah, but. It's, history is debatable. I'll have to research and maybe go through some of the books because maybe that's a good point because maybe there needs to be a Bunny Whaler movie and a Peter Tosh movie. So it's balanced. Yeah. 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 yeah or maybe, you know, a Whaler's yeah. movie yeah. and, you know. Well, and, we, you know, and I can understand them feeling like. You know they got kicked to the curb but mm -hmm. you have to remember in every group and you know this isn't always the case but in most cases there's always going to be that one star yeah you know yeah. like when michael became right. michael mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. smoky became smoky right right diana right. became done it's not to say Beyonce that the other people didn't Destiny's it's not Child. to say that they didn't have the talent the other people but the other ones actually stood out more mm -hmm. exactly. you know and they were able to parlay it into something bigger mm -hmm. Than other people, but that's not to say that you couldn't take your career to the next level. Why couldn't you? Exactly, exactly. exactly. So it's, it's like you know what? Don't be blaming it on Bob. Right, right. <laughs> and it's all and like you said something. It takes work. Yeah, music but it is ninety percent business, ten percent music. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you know, as a former uh, on the board of governors for the Recording Academy, you know yeah. about that the business yeah, side it is, a is business, you know? most. I mean, important. even with fashion, when I talk mm -hmm. to my students, my fashion students, you know, Miss Kelly, fashion is my passion, and I right. said that may be true, but fashion is a business. Mm -hmm. Yes. You yes. know, mm -hmm. it's not just about looking cute and mm -hmm. wearing the clothes. You really have to understand the business and how it works. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Michael Prince and the rest of these people, they knew. Right. Right. You know, right. because when I think about the Jacksons and I love the Jacksons, but they never did another album after Michael decided he was Michael. Right. Right. So right. Why didn't they go in and do right. other stuff? Right. So, I, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I just know that, uh, you know, they're sitting around waiting for Michael thinking he was going to come back and do a song with them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you guys are talented. Why don't you do something? Exactly. Janet did. Right. Right. You know, but anyway, so I think that uh, Bob Marley, you know, I think it hurt him that he had, the, you know, that the record company was pushing his whalers aside, but he knew that he had to, to 
to do what he needed to do mm -hmm. to keep this record deal going. Right, 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 right. And he had a message that he needed to get <laughs> to out. To get out, he did. He yes, really and did. he was a songwriter. He was a musician. And he, I think that Bob, I really do think that Bob had a huge capacity to love. I really do. Yeah. I never met the man. But his music is just so full of love. I think he said that in a few interviews right yeah but mm -hmm. it, i mean it's not just bob rita was like that too. yes and i yes, think that's exactly. why they i think that's why their bond mm -hmm. was so special you know i don't know if you guys ever seen this movie lackawanna blues that is my oh fave, yes, one of yes, my I favorite that. movies mm -hmm. there is a scene in mm -hmm. there where terrence williams mm -hmm. terrence howard is oh, yeah. the husband and when the wife she says uh you know there's things that go on between a man and a woman mm -hmm. that only a man and a woman understand oh yes okay That's you know good. so good other point. people can look out and see mm -hmm. why she do that or why right. do you, you mm -hmm. know what if they have an understanding that's all that matters that's their business that's, that's they business. all that matters Stay out of what it. they what they feel exactly and that's that one thing that i liked about rita she knew people was talking about her mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. knew it she right. felt it and you know and right. it, it hurt her a little bit but mm -hmm. she held her head up okay and was like like, look, I know what I'm doing. It, queen business. That's what queens do. Baby, baby, queens baby. mind their own regal mm -hmm. business. And if you see those comments in the chat, there's chickens and eagles. Are you an eagle or are you a chicken? Yeah. But not only is she a queen, she was a boss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call a boss lady. Uh, right. Rita was a boss lady, you know, mm -hmm. because like I said, that would break a lot of people, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and people would be shame and... Mm -hmm. Some of the women probably would have just divorced the man. Right, right, right. But she was like, uh, uh I didn't put in all this hard work. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. And then he wasn't even thinking about divorcing. Right, that was more right. her always thinking about right, that, not right, him. Right, 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 so right. Bob was smart. He knew what he had. <laughs> I think mean, both of them were smart. And again, they, it was, uh, they were ahead of all of us. Yeah, absolutely. With the polyamory thing, yeah, sharing the love. Yeah, she did it as well, because she had obviously children with other people. Mm -hmm. So it it seems like they were both on a higher level. They were in tune with each other than most people. Yeah. Yes, they were, just they were on a tune. higher level than most people. They were in tune. We we it took us a long time to catch up to Bob and Rita. Yeah, yeah. Because I certainly didn't understand it when I first read. Where's the other book? This is the my introduction to Bob Marley, which I read in What's college. What's the name of it? It's called Catch a Fire by Timothy White. Okay. This is where I first read about the life of Bob Marley and Rita. There's a Timothy lot about Wright Rita. Wright, really good book. Yes, he's a good author. This. Oh, he, is, yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. And um, also, if you want to, this is a fictionalized account of what happened, what might have happened when Bob was shot. It, it's in the movie. And the, what happened to the gunmen and the society at that time, Marlon James, A Brief History of Seven Killings. It was nominated for an award. It's fiction, but it's dead on. It was written by a young man that grew up in Jamaica. Oh, okay. And yes, 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 I have yes. To check that a history out. of uh, brief history of seven killings. So I, I think maybe a lot of one scene in the movie might have been influenced by this. I don't know, but it's a fascinating read. Well, you know, uh, what I didn't understand about that trench town, I was like, I don't want to go there because mm -hmm. some people don't play. Right. They, uh, during mm -hmm. election time, they mm -hmm. killed the opposite right, right. opponents. I'm like... <laughs> that's that's in this book. <laughs> I'm like, what? Right. right. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was kind of crazy to me. And the simple fact that Rita got shot. Yeah. yeah. And her dread saved her life. That's in the movie. That's in her one line. Her dreadlock love. saved her yeah. life. I'm like, is that real? Poetic justice. <laughs> Ooh, child. Yes. You know, both of them getting shot like that. And the simple fact that somebody would want to take their lives. Like, yeah. why? Like, right. really? Right. You right. know, and so that's when she had to get up out of there. And Bob wanted her to go away mm -hmm. to be safe. And, you know, thinking about the children mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it makes me wonder how much do the children remember right 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 you know, i would I'm, love to sit down and talk to one of the children you know right, uh, right. and just to find out their spin on it mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. yeah but you know but the simple fact that you know the mom have raised them to be who they are and what they are celebrities in their own right right now right i guess it must celebrities have been okay. with class and i rem i met Mrs. We, I call her Ms. Marley. I, I just can't. When I'm in her presence, I just can't call her Rita. I can believe that. Because I would, I would she's an same. elder. So I yeah. said, oh, Ms. Marley, I I just, um, I love your kids so much. You did a great job. I just love them. And she said to me, thank you for loving them 
and she gave me a big hug. She was very, Aww. she's very chill. Aww. She was very chill. Her spirit was just open, no diva attitude. Now, what no, does Marley say? He said, just cool. Just, right, just, right, 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 just cool, right, right. I love just that. Cool. Just cool, Yeah, right? and, and so, yeah, she's just, she's just, I miss her. I can't call her Rita, I'm sorry, even when I'm talking on the podcast, because we were taught to call our elders. We were taught not to use their first name. Their first name. If I call my aunt Mary, at 90 years old, she's back. I, I don't know what out of me. <laughs> right, and you know, and my students call me Miss Kelly. So, right, you know, Miss Kelly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so I'm calling Rita, Rita, like I know her. Right, 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 because you know, yeah, but so she's known. Miss Marley. Ms. Mar <laughs> and we're calling her me. by her stage name. Yeah, we're absolutely. calling her by her stage name. Absolutely. Remember Maya Angelou said, um, she went off on this one student, you do not call me Maya. I'm Dr. Angelo. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but Rita didn't have that vibe. She was just chill. Yeah. But I, what, I just... Uh, it's Mrs. Marley. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, she is my newfound shero. I mean, I found someone just... Some of the things that she was saying in this chapter just had so much wisdom, especially as she was talking about her relationship with Bob when she was a young girl, mm -hmm. you know, and how auntie would kind of get into it. And I loved mm -hmm. auntie, how auntie mm -hmm. was really trying to mm -hmm. guide her to be a better person and to be good and to be able mm -hmm. to get up out of Trent town mm -hmm. if she stayed focused on her goal. Right. Mm -hmm. And she didn't think Bob was that goal. Mm -hmm. um, but what I liked about Rita was like, well, you know what? He really is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, auntie, you'll see later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she had the vision. The well, and it was so funny because she said so that when they, he would get on television or a radio interview she'd go see auntie and then auntie would be like oh okay <laughs> you know but yeah. when when she wasn't doing when she didn't think that uh uh miss marley was doing right she mm -hmm. would actually tell the neighbors mm -hmm. see what that girl does now? <laughs> now she's not eating pork because she's this rastafari <laughs> that but all me. aunties do that yeah they it tickled talk. me i was just like oh my gosh she was more of a mother to that girl yes she yes, was because... more of a genuine mother than auntie and i think what connected um bob and reed i'm using their their movie names now mm -hmm. i think what connected them was that they both had a history of abandonment they felt yes yes was bob's father had abandoned him and rita's mom had left um went abroad and left her so they they talk about it in the movie as teenagers where they talk about a feeling of aloneness and alienation and abandonment and i think that's part of the bond don't you now look so on page 35, mm -hmm. I, here it is. It says, and I think our relationship came out of wanting, needing, mm -hmm. seeing the need in each other. Mm -hmm. My yes. need in you, I need someone like you mm -hmm. to help me, to make me what I am, what I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I think we did great. So yeah. that's what they, they, yeah, they had this magical bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, sometimes I think all of us are put on this earth mm. with a special talent, mm -hmm. a special gift. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't know what that gift is. We don't pursue it. We don't mm -hmm. encourage it. We don't grow it. Mm -hmm. And for those that do, I think that they are, how do I say? I think then they are geared towards that special mate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so the mate that you end up with is that mate that can actually handle your greatness. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's handle. what I believe. That's a great point that can handle because not everybody can yeah. handle greatness. Some people are intimidated. Yep. Some people want the light light themselves. Yep. Oh, how come everyone's coming up to my wife? Yeah. How come everyone's coming up to my husband? Yeah. But, you know, it takes a real strong soul to be able to... To stand in the background when you need to. And that makes me think of Katherine Jackson. She's yes. A, she's another example mm -hmm. of like a Miss Marley. Who yes. Who's able to withstand all the pressure, all the, mm -hmm. the, the gossip and all the right. this and the that. Right. Who was there when Joe died? She, Catherine. You see? Catherine. Yes. <laughs> you see? Yes. End of conversation. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I think sometimes it's a spiritual gun, but it goes, it's way beyond sex, way be. Yeah, and money. It's oh, just yeah. absolutely. It's just bad. And I think the Jamaican as a culture, they understand the magic. Jamaican culture is somewhat advanced in terms of relationships. And I think we Westerners, Americans, really don't get it because of the Judeo Christian tradition. Right, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And Rastafarianism is based on a myth, you know, it's very based on the Bible and in the Bible you have 
your polyamorous relationships, especially in times of hardships when one woman couldn't get pregnant so she had her sister or surrogate or something. It's There's a lot of things, but we don't really focus. We focus on the parts of the Bible that we agree with, that we approve of, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But so I think that it's just, you, 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 it's hard to judge people and the people, Bob's lifestyle because we did not grow up in that culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, I'm looking at one of my notes where it says the Wailing Whalers had a concert at National Stadium, mm -hmm. Stadium that night on the bill with the Jackson 5. Oh, so that's, <laughs> see, it's all full circle, full circle. Yeah, I, thought that, I thought that was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, I wonder if Bob and Michael just sat down in their room and either smoked a joint or just had a talk. What do you think? Oh, I can see Michael's. No, I cannot see Michael lighting up. But, <laughs> but you never know. You know right, what I mean? Right. There's a famous picture of Bob Marley and the Jacksons in a tree in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But we don't hear much about the dialogue that went a lot. Wait, maybe we could track down some of the people that are alive that were there. That, that were there. Yeah, tell that us. There's, there's some people still around that was um some yeah on maybe on instagram facebook mm -hmm. was, we're interconnected. so i see that they liked uh mark he that's the other thing bob marley used to love marcus garvey oh yes yes yeah I, I thought that was very interesting so here it says some jamaicans paid particular attention to garvey's prophecy that an african that an african king would deliver us from our situation as colonized people Right, Bob. It was Marcus Garvey, Haile Selassie. Right, and then that's when it says, and then became to believe the European ruler, emperor Haile Selassie, to have been that person. Right, right. So, yeah. And the most important thing is that Bob was way ahead of everybody in terms of Afrocentric thinking and black pride, black self determination, black beauty. Mm -hmm. There was a, a girlfriend he had in Africa, Pascaline Bongo. When he first saw her, he said to her backstage, you are very ugly. She was offended. He was talking about her straightening of the hair. Mm -hmm. He said, sister, you don't, your hair is beautiful. Why are you frying it like that? Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what he meant. But she, so she eventually went more rudely, but he wasn't trying to insult her. He was just saying that, why are we changing our appearance to conform to European culture? Right. 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 I mean, because there was a, a part in the book that I actually am trying to see if I can find it right now where he had told uh, Miss Marley that, mm -hmm. you know, you are beautiful the way you are. There's no need for you to change anything. Yes, exactly. No need to change anything. And, you know, at first she wasn't really keen on having her hair like that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she did it. But then when she went to America... Uh -huh. They straighten her hair. Yeah. And What's put her, that about? And put her yeah. on makeup. And she loved it. She was yeah. like, oh, I haven't, I haven't seen me look like this. So, I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think there was something to having a change. Yeah. Yeah. Know, there's but, a change up for us. Or for and, a hot second. But yeah. then she went back to mm -hmm. who she mm -hmm. was. Yeah. And that's another thing about choice. A woman should have the freedom to change up without, you know, worrying about oppression or... Right, and girl, and the simple fact that we got hair laws where black people can't wear their hair. I know. And so I'm just like, I'm so through with America. Right. I don't know what to do. But now we have the Crown Act that protects natural no, hair. No, there was a, there. I don't even want to get on that whole story. We'll talk about that oh, later. Oh, okay, okay. I want to stay focused with this. Oh, okay. Remind me to talk about okay, that, Okay, the Crown Act. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, but let's get back to Bob and Rita and the movie. So, again, um, the highlights in the movie was, it was just energy flowing i think it could have been a series on television yes, i would have yes. wanted i would yes. have wanted more mm -hmm. and longer mm -hmm. you know because it, his, there's so much more to his life that wasn't shown and right. talked about right so i think you guys can still do like a mini series yes yeah, so <laughs> yeah. do a mini series where yeah. you can actually include the kids right where right we get to hear from them it's, right now so exactly i don't exactly. think i don't think we're done with the marley's right, yet right <laughs> and it it's such a, a huge life and under two hours, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I said, I know, you know, they had to rush through a lot, mm -hmm. leave out a lot. Right. But I think a mini series would have allowed you more time to really, really tell the story. And again, it's not too late. Look how many, they get ready to do another Michael Jackson by I know, I know. So, now that's going to be interesting. So, yeah. but that's why we can do another Marley thing for television. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
I think that would be really good. And maybe but, you can even cast some of you, the real family members as, yes. as the people. Yes. And then or I'm, make it a documentary. I don't know. Yes. But let's, then, let's, let's, let's keep it going. And, now, <laughs> and, there, and there's definitely certainly enough music to oh, absolutely. feature that. <laughs> absolutely. And we can not forget about the music. Yes. And so we felt that people think of Bob Marley, I think, as family. Um, because I talked to a friend and she said, oh, it was like watching my family on there. Yeah. So we, everyone has a personal connection, connection with Bob. Yeah. So I think a part of the critics is like people feel that they know Bob so well that they could have, they want to tell Bob's story through their narrative, through their lens, yeah. right? Yeah. And everyone, when, when I first read the book, I imagined, I put myself in the book and I was imagining, okay, this is a movie. Who's going to play Bob? Who's going to play Rita? Who's gonna? I envision the characters in my head right after I read the book back in college. So it's really fascinating to see how it actually came to fruition. It's a hard thing to do mm -hmm. because we all have a version in our head of us being with Bob, or we think that we know Bob, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. So now listen to this. This is, goes back to the hair thing where he mm -hmm. had said this to Rita. This was on page 38, guys. Mm -hmm. As soon as Auntie allowed Bob to take me out, he began to show me the Rasta way to live. Mm -hmm. You're a queen, mm -hmm. a black queen, he said. You're pretty just as you are. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do anything else. You don't have to straighten your hair. You can wear it natural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love right. that. <laughs> I love that. Yay, Bob. Right? Yeah. See, how, see how advanced Bob was in his thinking? Yeah. No, he was definitely a, a laid back, cool kind of guy. And it was very interesting um, about being in America. He didn't like wearing a suit. Mm -hmm. and all of that yeah. you know because he's like wearing his t-shirt and his mm -hmm. jeans and uh very comfortable with mm -hmm. that right. as a matter of fact speaking of which after i read the book and found out that they had the foundation because she mm -hmm. mentioned the foundation in there i went to the foundation and oh my god you can shop mm -hmm. beautiful t-shirts and mm -hmm. sweatshirts and so yeah. i'm definitely going to get one i didn't yes. know which one to get i was like yeah. oh this is overwhelming yeah. which one do you get yeah so it was kind of nice then to see his soccer outfits yes. and things like that yes, i that thought was awesome. that was good and so if you guys get a chance make sure you go to the bob morley foundation and go shopping go shopping <laughs> and support the and guess what we are in a bmw what was bob marley's favorite car a bmw why well, because it's a good car. <laughs> it's a good car. And Bob Marley and the Whalers. He said that was his car. Bob BMW. Oh, the BMW. Bob Marley, Bob Marley and the Whalers. Whalers. Yeah. Okay, so I missed that one. Yeah. I really I think that there's, one. I think there's a shot of the, in the movie. In the movie there, that man. it does that. So we're in the BMW as a tribute to Bob. So now, do we think this movie's going to get nominated for anything? Oh, yeah. It better. I, I predict Best Picture, Best Actress, Lasana Lynch, Best Actor, Kingsley, how do you say? Ben Kingsley. Kingsley I'm not, you know, Deer, Kingsley Benadier. Right. Right, right. Uh, the music, best score, Stephen Marley. So best soundtrack or best score. I predict best picture, best actress, best actor, best score. What about you? And so if it doesn't happen, I won't be surprised. Why is it? Well, because we know how these award shows oh, yeah. are. You know how I feel about mm -hmm. them. You know, I always felt that mm -hmm. We make such a big deal out of the Academy Awards, mm -hmm. out of the Grammys. Right, and right. I know that if they didn't have us, they wouldn't even exist. Exactly. You right. know, so we, if we showed them by not showing up, mm -hmm. then things would change. Right. But right. as long as we keep crying and begging for their attention, for their approval, we're yeah. not going to get it. So right. it, in our eyes, he already won the Grammys. Right. He right. already won this, the this Academy This movie already Award. has an Academy Award. You know what I'm saying? Award, in, our, in our eyes. Right. So in terms of what they say, it mm -hmm. won't really matter. Especially exactly. to me. Right, right. You know, so I don't let them be the judge and jury of my people's work. This is definitely the film of the decade. It better right? be. <laughs> well, because you know what? It's really not just talking about just in anybody this was a brilliant man who mm -hmm. not and it wasn't just about his music he changed lives mm -hmm. you know he gave people hope mm -hmm. he got people out of poverty right. he showed people th that there's other ways of doing things mm -hmm. other than be committing crimes right. and whatnot exactly so he his his legacy is much more than music as right. far as i'm concerned right right exactly and especially it's politics Absolutely. it's culture fashion um adidas is, all of it adidas has a new bob marley shoe out you know there's countries that when they they 
go to war. Countries have gone to war and they play Bob Marley's music when they're fighting. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So he was just much more than a mm -hmm. musician, right? An artist. Right. He it's was definitely transcendent. Yes, yes. he was so, definitely the guy. So in closing, we're almost at an hour. We better wrap this up. And if we have anything to add, we will add on to this video. But what would you like to say in closing? I Kelly just want to say. Sheila, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. Sheila and I went to the movies together. I had already seen it with my husband. Mm -hmm. And I said, Sheila, we need to see it together. Mm -hmm. So we're in the movie taking notes taking and notes. laughing and yeah. eating popcorn right. and like, oh my God. Yeah. And I couldn't wait for this day to be able to sit and share how much that movie and uh, the book meant to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I found out uh, I have this kindred spirit with right. Miss Marley. Ms. And Ms. so I am just so, so grateful for you having me here. And, and if you haven't seen the movie, please mm -hmm. go see it. And then also make sure you do go to the foundation. Bob, what is it? The, the Bob Marley Foundation. foundation. To check out the One Love movie. Check out Ziggy Marley is on tour this summer. ZiggyMarley.com. Stephen Marley's on tour. Damien, the traffic jab tour. YG Marley is hey, on look at tour. this girl. She know all about. She know all <laughs> this, of these stuff. The Marleys are dominating the culture right now. Well, so. she's so funny, guys. She was like, Kelly, when we go see the movie, wear Rastafarian colors. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have Rastafarian <laughs> colors. I'm sorry. Yeah, but she did. She wore a beautiful <laughs> shirt that she had made. I yeah. found something. That yeah. I was so able let's to let's wear. see if Kelly designs her own San Francisco based <laughs> Rasta attire. Well, because we some hippies out here, okay? <laughs> we some hippies, and we will put the trunk on our back and the lid on our head like Zora Neale Hurst I'm Hurst telling you, said. So and we don't care about fashion standards or nothing. We do our own thing absolutely. out here in Frisco. Absolutely. So, so to yeah. the Marley family, you know, one love. One love. <laughs> one love. Thank you everybody for bringing this beautiful film tonight. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly is an intellectual and a professor. So thank you for your wonderful insight. And it's great to talk to someone who's brand new to the culture. Absolutely. Yeah, and bringing Absolutely. your knowledge and your wisdom as a university professor and a stylist in the music industry. Thank you for bringing your perspective. Well, thank you so You're much. Right. Like I said, I enjoyed it and, you know, mm -hmm. I got more books to read, I see. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, love y'all. One Bye -bye. love. Bye-bye.